Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Marquez and I will be giving the presentation today on the life and work of Gustavo Gutierrez. Gustavo Gutierrez was born June 8, 1928 in Lima, Peru. He was inspired to become a doctor because of a bone disease that left him with a permanent limp. He studied pre-med at the National University of Peru, but he decided to leave pre-med and train for the priesthood. He studied philosophy at the seminary in Santiago, Chile. He then went on to study philosophy and psychology at Louvain in Belgium, where he wrote his master thesis on Freudian psychoanalysis. He then did his doctoral work at Lyons in France and was ordained in Rome in 1959 as a Dominican priest. After returning home from school, Gutierrez went to live and do work in the slums just outside of Rimac, Peru. This area is just three miles away from Lima, where he was born. Lima, as you can see, is a very beautiful area on the coast of the Pacific Ocean and is the capital of Peru, the largest city in Peru, and one of its largest tourist destinations. The reference to slums here is a reference to an overcrowded area that is inhabited by the extremely poor and is known for the very deprived living conditions. This would include no running water, electricity, social disorganization, which is no law enforcement. And this is where Gutierrez did his work, where he was a priest of a parish, just three miles outside of a rich inhabited city. These people were left to fend for themselves. During this time, Gutierrez also founded and directed the Bartholomew de la Casas Institute in Lima, which seeks to serve the poor. Since then, he has been a professor at the Pontifical, Pontifical, ah, Pontifical University of Peru and has been visiting a visiting professor at many major universities across the world, including many here in the United States. And he is currently a professor uh, at Notre Dame emeritus I think that is but what that really means is he's a retired professor that's continuing his work at Notre Dame Gutierrez was the first to popularize and solidify the idea and coined the term liberation theology in his book a theology of liberation which came about from his experience in the slums he's considered by many to be the father of liberation theology because of his work although he would be the first to admit that the concept was already around and many had already done a lot of work on it. He just worked in conjunction with them. Some of his works can be seen here. I have personally read the book, A Theology of Liberation, and found it very useful not only for this project, but for my own personal life and ministry. In fact, this book comes with high praise, and I think it was Christianity Today that named it one of the 100 books of the century. And Church Times from the UK named it one of the top 100 books of all time. Whatever the case or personal view, this book and Gutierrez's work has been very influential on many. Although Gutierrez has, ha has had a huge theological impact on the church, he sees himself first as a, pro as a pastor who is called to do work alongside the people in his community, and second as someone who does theology in his spare time in which he seeks to do theology from the perspective of the poor within the church. Liberation theology is considered by Gutierrez a theology of salvation, which emphasizes faith in action and calls the church and individual Christian to care for the poor and oppressed through faith and involvement in political and social affairs. Thus, he believed the church has to choose the preferential option for the poor, which is the foundation for Gutierrez's theology. So what does that actually mean? Preferential means this. God loves everyone, of course, but God has a preference for the poor. Gutierrez believed this because as he reads scripture, he sees how God seeks to be with the poor and how he liberates the poor and the oppressed. He sees Jesus coming and living among the poor and his followers being poor. And a quote from his book is, The poor are not better than others in any way, but in God's eyes, the last are first. The option portion of this 
uh, according to Gutierrez, is not actually an option. But we are called to love. And since we're called to love, we are also called to be committed to the poor. There is no option here. It is a we have to do it. Thus, when we choose to love the poor, God's love is manifested into this world. And who are the poor? Well, according to Gutierrez, the poor are not just economically poor, but they are the socially poor, or people who are deemed to be non-persons, the outcasts of society. It's important to note that Gutierrez does not believe God causes this situation on people, and poverty is not the will of God. He believes humans are the ones who cause poverty out of selfishness and greed. This poverty then leads to death. He believes poverty comes out of refusal to love, which for Gutierrez is anything out for which for Gutierrez anything outside of love is sin, which can be seen as individual and structural or found in the systems. Sin for Gutierrez is simply the inaction of an individual to reciprocate the love of God to one's neighbor. He leaves by not showing love to others, like how God shows love to us, then we ultimately are not showing love to God. Thus, he believes that behind every unjust situation, there is a person or a personal or collaboration of the two of a willingness to reject God and neighbor. For Gutierrez, sin is not just spiritual, nor is it just personal. For him, sin reaches into the physical world and affects communities. Thus, people can alleviate poverty through giving attention and love to the poor people. People are to be a part of God's salvation plan, which is liberating people from sin and oppression, such as seen through social classes, race, and culture. Not only are they spiritually to be saved, but true salvation comes when they are physically cared for, or as Gutierrez would say, loved. Gutierrez is not saying that he does not believe in personal salvation, but he does always connect the individual with a particular community during a particular time in history. Therefore, the salvation of each individual impacts the social and political aspects of the person's community. So for Gutierrez, salvation is God's action in history. However, this is not limited only to divine activities such as creation and incarnation, but also includes the responsive movements taken by humanity either to partake in or deny said acts brought into history by divine interaction. Gutierrez believes that salvation is not a one-time event, but that it is an ongoing event that involves all of humankind. He believes that the good news we receive in Christ is this. God's love is given freely to all. This then frees all who accept his love to express that same love to others. He sees God stepping into creation throughout history from the Genesis 1 to the present and beyond in order to express his love by being, bringing creation closer to him, to be in relationship with him and to be in community with him, and the community to be in relationship with one another. He suggests that humanity is saved through communal engagement in transforming this world into a world that reflects that of the total fulfillment of the kingdom of God. Put another way, individuals are invited to step outside their selfish individualism and join together with others in building of a new counter world within the current world. This is done through God interacting with humankind through the offering of his love and communion and the response of humankind to God's gift and the reciprocating of that gift to others. Gutierrez hence summarizes salvation with, Liberation is freedom from oppression of sin, selfishness, and justice, and is freedom into love and communion with others that is brought about through Christ the Liberator, in which communion and love is fully accomplished. At the center of this salvation is Jesus Christ, who, though the, who through the cross and resurrection transforms the cosmos and embraces the full aspect of humanity, body, and spirit, individual and society, person and cosmos, time and eternity. 
Therefore, the Christian of the world, Christians of the world, are asked to participate in this salvation by actively engaging oppressed and poor communities in order to be bearers of God's salvation through history, or more specifically, specifically to live as Christ lived. Thus, through Christ, humanity is liberated or saved from sin and the very root of social injustice. If sin is oppressing in some way another person, then salvation is seen as accepting Christ's free gift of love and participating with Christ in liberating those people who are oppressed, thus fulfilling communion with both humankind and God. In the end, liberation can be seen in the threefold process, according to Gutierrez. One, freedom from an unjust and oppressive socioeconomical and political order, or what he calls political liberation. Two, freedom from selfish tendencies and cohesion with others, or human liberation. And three, liberation from sin into communion with God. Hence, one can begin to see that Gutierrez's Sortology is tied extremely close with his theology of liberation and the idea of community being an active component throughout history with salvation. Gutierrez's whole theology is entwined with empire. At many points, he speaks out against empire, political and ecclesial. In fact, after Vatican II, which was the call of the church to look after the poor, and Median, which was the call for pastoral instruction on what that would look like, the leadership in the church and political sphere tried to shut down liberation thought because it threatened the power and, in some cases, escalated violence. In the political sphere, political parties and people who wanted power in Latin America began to execute priests, torture priests, beat priests, because they spoke out against poverty and social justice, or in this case, social injustice. In some cases, the leadership of the church, which would be the Catholic Church, tried to keep some priests quiet as well. Pope Benedict was one such person who denounced the liberation theology because of its close relation to Marxism and communism. However, Pope Francis is a huge supporter of liberation theology and actually engages in talks with Gutierrez. Gutierrez would say that this is not a political ideology, but is a theology that comes from God and thus should not be violent, a violent revolution, but should bring about a revolutional or revolutionary shalom. I'll say that again. This is a theology that comes from God that should not be a violent revolution, but a revolutionary shalom. Although liberation theology seeks to critique the empire, it also seeks to join in by changing its structure from the inside out and not doing away with it, but to build a new society that reflects the experience and meaning of faith based on the commitment to abolish injustice. This liberation theology challenges us to reflect on and ask, are we focused too much on orthodoxy over orthopraxy? Are we worried about right thought or right action? For Gutierrez to stand in the corner and do nothing is to stand with the oppressor. We either stand with the oppressed or with the oppressor. Here are some of my sources for you to look at. And I look forward to engaging with everyone in the forum. Have a good night.